Hello, so my name is Hamish Folletta. I'm the CEO of Sato Advisory. Sato works with the team of Burke Britain Financial Partners to assist in the construction of the listed component of client investment portfolios. The purpose of this video is just to provide a very brief overview of the process that Sato employs in terms of actually building out the investment portfolio for clients. Before we begin, uh, it's important for me just to provide this disclaimer. Um, so the information contained herein is general advice only. It focuses on research undertaken on the financial product, but has not taken into consideration any individuals or group of individuals, personal circumstances, objectives, or financial situation. Consequently, you will need to make your own assessment or seek advice that does does take into consideration your personal situation and objectives for long-term before taking any action. So <clears throat> there are two key types of securities that we will discuss today that Sato uses in client portfolios. So the first type of security is what's called an ordinary share. An ordinary share, an example of that would be something like BHP or Commonwealth Bank. With an ordinary share, you have direct ownership in a business. That business will make profits um, and it will choose to pay dividends uh, to shareholders uh, from those profits. The second type of security is what's called a listed investment company. A listed investment company is also listed on the stock exchange like an ordinary share, except the listed investment company is somewhat like a managed fund in that that company will go out and buy a portfolio of other companies on behalf of their investors. So an example of a listed investment company might be something like Australian Foundation Investments uh, that's been around for many decades. When you buy Australian Foundation Investments, uh, they buy a portfolio of, of Australian blue chip shares. So. AFI gives you exposure to things like BHP and Commonwealth Bank and Telstra, etc. So when we purchase ordinary shares, um, there uh, it's it's important to remember that an ordinary share is simply part ownership in a real business. So again when you buy shares in BHP, you don't simply own a piece of paper that goes up and down each day. Um, you actually have ownership in the company BHP itself. Uh, when you have that ownership, you are obviously exposed to the profitability of that company. Um, with the portfolios that we construct for Burke Britain, they are deliberately focused on the long term. We're not interested in trying to buy a small speculative company for a dollar a share and try and sell it at a dollar twenty, for example. We want to own quality businesses that we feel we can own for the very long term for clients. So, with that in mind, what are the key characteristics of the businesses that we want to own for clients? So the first criteria is that the business needs to be easy to understand. So an example of that would be something like Amcor. Amcor is the largest plastics packaging group in the world. So a lot of the products that you will buy from supermarkets that will, will be packaged by Amcor. Uh, it's a very simple product to understand. Um, and it's, it's a business that supplies a product that's important in everyone's day-to-day -day life. That's a very good example of a business that's easy to understand. In addition to that, we want to own businesses that are diversified across industry. A really good example would be, for instance, the banks. Simply owning four diff the four major banks, ANZ, CBA, NAB, and Westpac does not provide significant diversification. So we want to own a portfolio of businesses that operate in different industries that provides underlying resilience within a client's portfolio to be able to withstand the economic cycle. 
in addition to that, we want to own businesses that are leaders in their industry. A good example would be retail. Um, there are lots of businesses operating in retail, uh, but the reality is there's only a handful of really good businesses. Uh, Wes Farmers uh, is, a, is a share that we own for most clients. Wes Farmers owns the business Bunnings, which everybody would know. So Bunnings obviously dominates uh, in the, in the home, home construction hardware type business. Um, to show the resilience of, of that company, the leadership that it has, um, Woolworths spent an absolute fortune uh, in trying to uh, get access to that industry with their own business. Um, and unfortunately, they weren't able to make any inroads because Bunnings was just so entrenched and had such strong leadership in the industry. Another key characteristic that we look for is identifying businesses that are able to generate attractive returns on shareholder capital. An example of that would be something like Sonic Healthcare. Um, the business is able to deploy shareholder capital at attractive rates of return. What that means is that over time, uh, that leads to strong earnings growth, which also leads to the ability to to increase dividends and payouts to shareholders over time. And then the final characteristic that we look for is ideally businesses that are paying strong dividends that also have the ability to grow in the future. Uh, an example of that would be something like Transurban, which owns most of the toll roads in the country. Uh, so as an example, uh, 10 years ago, Transurban was paying a dividend of about 29 cents a share. Uh, last year, Transurban paid a dividend of more than double that of around about 61 cents a share. Um, so if you can own a portfolio of businesses that pay an attractive overall income, and we know that in two years, five years, 10 years, that that income will be higher than where it is today, it gives investors the, a really strong understanding of what their income profile will look like going forward. So the second types of securities that we own are listed investment companies. Uh, and as I mentioned before, a listed investment company itself will invest in a portfolio of underlying companies for investors. Uh, one of the great things about a listed investment company is that it gives an investor instant diversification. So simply just owning something like Australian Foundation Investments that I mentioned before will give you exposure to most of the Australian blue chip companies that are listed on the stock exchange. So some of the key characteristics that we look for in identifying quality listed investment companies include an attractive fee structure. Uh, so we want to try and identify listed investment companies that pay a very that that have a very low underlying fee structure. Um, an example that I will show you in a minute is MFF Capital, where uh, the they they pay a fixed fee to the underlying manager, which works out at less than 0.4% per annum, which is incredibly low for a manager of that quality. In addition to that, we also want to own listed investment companies that give you exposure to uh, a, a portfolio that would be difficult for you to replicate yourself. So MFF, as an example, again, invests in a portfolio of outstanding global companies, businesses like Visa, MasterCard, Google. Um, these types of businesses are very difficult for a lot of people, a lot of Australian based investors to own directly. So by owning MFF Capital, it gives you the ability to get exposure to those types of businesses with just one share. In addition to that, we want to own listed investment companies that have delivered outstanding long term track records of performance for shareholders. We also ideally want to identify listed investment companies where the manager of that company 
is aligned to us as investors. So we want that manager to have skin in the game. Um, and again, to use MFF as an example, uh, the manager of that listed investment company would now have over $200 million of his own money invested alongside us. And as I mentioned, finally, um, another great advantage of listed investment companies is that it gives additional diversification over and above the direct ordinary shares that we own for, for clients. This slide provides a snapshot of the portfolio of MFF Capital. Uh, you can see with just one share, it gives investors exposure to businesses like Visa, MasterCard, Home Depot, Bank of America, JP Morgan, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that that helps to provide a very brief overview of how Sato goes about constructing portfolios for clients for Burke Britain. Uh, we encourage clients to reach out if you have any questions at all. Thank you for your time and we'll see you soon.